Okay, guys, so we are at the end of our story, but there is sort of an afterword. Um, I don't know that I would really call it an epilogue because um, it doesn't really go on with the story, but this story was written on a real wolf behind the story. So I am going to read a little bit of the information. So um, it says, this story is inspired by the life and travels of a real Oregon wolf called OR7. He was born into the, uh, let's see how we would say that, Imnaha Pack in the Wallowa Mountains in northeastern Oregon. Biologists fitted OR7 with a radio collar. This allowed them to track his movement, to help protect livestock, and to learn more about how the wolves behave. So this is a picture of OR7, and he's photographed by a trail camera in May of 2014. Isn't he pretty? And the caption under this picture says, Oregon is home to many black wolves, and OR7's mate has a black coat like this one. So if you remember in the story, her name was Knight, <clears throat> and it was a black wolf. So this is in, in September of 2011, when OR7 was about two years old, he left his home and traveled more than a thousand miles through eastern and southern Oregon and into northern California. Although he passed through cattle, cattle and sheep ranching territory along the way, he didn't kill any livestock. OR7 ended his journey in the Sisayu, or Siskiyou National Forest region of the Cascade Range, a habitat similar to the one that he grew up in, a region rich in deer and elk. There he found a mate where no other wolf had been seen for nearly 70 years. Wow. In 2014, the pair had at least three pups who survived their first winter. And in the summer of 2015, when the pair had a second litter of pups, they were named the Rogue Pack. And here is a picture of them. Aren't they so cute? It says wolf pups emerging from their den. Um, so they were named the Rogue Pack because they live in the Rogue River watershed. OR7 was given the name Journey in a naming contest involving ch school children around the world. As of this writing, Journey is about 10 years old, a brilliant accomplishment for a wild wolf. So it's very unusual that a, that a wolf would live that long out in the wild like that. Um, most don't live half as long. So half of 10 would be about five years old, right? He and his mate had a fifth litter of pups in the spring of 2015. Wow, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> so children had named our wolf in our story the story the wolf in our story is called wander even though wander is um, <clears throat> you know a made-up fictional name his real name is journey okay it says wild wolves captured on camera in oregon okay this is another picture it says researchers fit radio collars to wolves to attract them in the wild so <clears throat> this wolf is not hurt. They're just putting a collar on him so that they can track them to see his, um, you know, his movements and, and to learn more about wolves and what they do. So, okay, here is OR7's journey. <clears throat> and so this is the state of Oregon. And so this is mainly where he, you know, where he lived. Um, and they were able to track him. And that's pretty amazing that they were able to track him and see some of the different things that he was able to do and what he kind of went through, right? Pretty cool. So that's in the back of your book. Let's see. Um, and then here's some things about wolves. So speed, although wolves can sprint up to 40 miles per hour, their true strength is distance running. They can cover 30 to 60 miles. Um, a day when pressed a wolf can run a hundred miles in a single day. Wow, that's a lot. They are not deterred by rough terrain, fences, steep slopes, bodies of water, injuries, or weather of any kind. So that's pretty amazing um, to be able to run a hundred miles in a single day. Um, communication. 
<clears throat> wolves communicate with each other, not just with their voices, but also through their body language and their facial expressions. They have a keen sense of hearing, picking up sounds from up to 10 miles away. 10 miles, that's pretty far. Um, the size of wolves. Um, wolves are four and a half to six and a half feet from nose to tail. So that's a pretty, pretty big animal. Their average weight is 70 to 115 pounds. Males are larger than females and wolves in the Arctic are the largest of all. Their teeth. Wolves have 42 teeth. That's 10 more than humans. Their bite is stronger than a lion's, a tiger's, or even a grizzly bear's. Wolves eat fast. They can gulp down 20 pounds of meat in just a few minutes. Wow. Equivalent to 100 hamburgers. Wow, that's pretty amazing. 100 hamburgers at one time. That's, that's a lot. Their smell. Wolves can smell prey more than two miles away. They mark their territory with regular placement of urine to warn other wolves to keep their distance. So they mark their territory. Wolves have scent markers in their paws so that one wolf can follow another. Pretty cool. Okay, this is a wolf track. Only a bear's track is larger than a wolf's. Any track that is as large as your outstretched hand belongs to a bear. So if you stretch it out like that, belongs to a bear or a wolf. Bear tracks have five toes, okay? And wolf tracks have four. The track shown on the right-hand page is life-size. So there's four toes there, so that must be a wolf. And the, uh, the bear has five tracks. Pretty amazing. Look at that. Wolf packs. Wolves live in packs as small as two wolves and as large as 30. But most packs have five to eight wolves. The pack is led by an alpha pair that has formed a long-term bond. Some wolves stay in their home pack forever. Others leave and join a neighboring pack. Some, like OR7, dispense and form a new pack in a new territory. Wolf pups are born in the spring. They weigh one pound at birth and have blue eyes that usually turn amber by eight months of age. Members of the pack will drag large pieces of meat back to the den for the alpha female to eat while nursing her pups. Later, adult pack members will carry meat in their throats and bring it to the pups who lick the adults' mouths to get them to cough up the pre-chewed pre meat. Wool. Wolf packs reach adult size at one year, <clears throat> and they are old enough to dispense from their pack in the second or third year. Okay. The wolf behavior. A single wolf pack claims a territory with enough food to feed all of its members. A pack will have a regular rendezvous site within its territory where the wolves gather and sleep. The alpha female digs a den for the pups nearby. Territories can be as small as 25 square miles. In the Arctic, a pack might keep 500 square mile range. Most packs have a territory of about 100 square miles. <clears throat> wolves hunt ungulates, ungulates, I don't know, which are animals with hooves. Okay, that was new for me. So, ungulates are animals that have hooves, such as deer, elk, moose, and bison. By hunting together, wolves can bring down animals that weigh 5 to 15 times more than a single wolf does. To their credit, elk fight back, and many wolves have sustained multiple broken bones from being kicked by their prey. Wolves will take smaller prey when larger game are scarce, and sometimes they eat carrion. They have never hunted humans. Wild wolves have a very strong instinct to hunt what they were taught to hunt by their parents, so most will take livestock only as a last resort. Okay. <clears throat> and the caption here says, working as a pack, wolves hunt prey much larger than themselves. So here we have the gray wolf. They hunt the white-tailed deer. They help the elk. 
hunt the Roosevelt elk, and they also hunt moose. And all of these have hooves. Ravens and wolves are symbiotic. <clears throat> they often work together in the wild to catch prey. Ravens spot prey and leave the wolves to it. Wolves open the hides of their prey, some, something ravens, which lacked hooked beats, beaks, cannot do for themselves. So um, when the wolf finds, um, you know, a prey, the ravens can also benefit from that because they can't tear into the hide. Um, so the, the wolf kind of helps the ravens with their food as well. Okay. The habitats of the Pacific Northwest. Journey, who is our wonder, passed through some of the most spectacular landscapes in the Pacific Northwest. So that's up by Oregon. That's where he was roaming, including the Zumwalt Prairie, the wetlands of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge, and the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest. Okay. The prairie. The Zumwalt Prairie is 300,000 acres of the last native bunch grass prairie in North America. Because it's a remote area and has an elevation of 3,500 to 5,500 feet, it has never been farmed. In July, it can reach 100 degrees by noon, but fall to 35 degrees overnight. The Zumwalt Prairie is home to many birds, from the smallest song sparrows to the mighty golden eagle. Its grasses and wildflowers support cattle and sheep, mice and voles, deer and elk, coyotes and cougars, and more than a hundred species of bees. Hell's Canyon borders the prairie to the east. At more than 7,900 feet, it's deeper than the Grand Canyon. <clears throat> elk are the noisiest of all ungulates. <laughs> They bark, they chirp, they squeal, meow, whistle, and bugle. The bulls grow a new set of antlers every spring that can weigh as much as 40 pounds, and they shed them every winter. At an inch a day, antlers are the fastest growing kind of bone. Okay. Then we have coyote, coyotes or coyotes are half the size of wolves, but in many ways they are, the, they are more successful predator. They live twice as long, will eat almost anything, and can survive in every climate from the desert to the Arctic, and even, and even the biggest cities. Hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are the jeweled acrobats of the bird world. They can hover and fly in any direction, including backward, at speeds of up to 45 miles per hour. They weigh about as much as a penny, and they make nests of grass, leaves, and spider silk that are the size of half of a walnut shell and hold one to three eggs. Hummingbirds eat twice their weight in nectar, pollen, insects, and tree sap every day. The mild-mannered plant-eating porcupine is armored with 30,000 quills. When attacked, porcupines strike with their tails or even charge backwards into a predator. The quills embed in the predator's flesh and detach from the porcupine who escapes. The quills are extremely painful and difficult to remove. So these things actually shoot out and attack. Okay, the camas plant has a beautiful purple flower. It's one of the staple foods of the native peoples of the Northwest. When slow roasted, the root becomes a sweet starch that is highly nourishing. Okay. So it goes on, guys, to talk about the wild horses, pronghorns, sandhill cranes. The pronghorn, there was a part in here about the pronghorns where um, Wander, the wolf, thought it was a deer. He kind of said it was a, you know, a different looking deer, but he was really talking about the pronghorns. And in the book, there was a part about when he, you know, he saw the horses and the horse um, had laid the, the foal, had had a baby. Um, so we're talking about forest. There's cougars, cougar information, salmon, the red cedar, 
trees. Okay, and we're going to end with this. It's the author's note. Okay, migration is the heartbeat of the world. Many creatures move from one place to the other, from the monarch butterfly that weighs less than half of a raisin and flies more than 3,000 miles, to the gray whale that travels just as far and weighs 40 tons. Animals migrate to find food and shelter. They migrate to give birth to their young. They migrate when another animal threatens their home ground and when their home becomes too crowded. They migrate because of climate change, because humans have taken over their territory, and because of natural disasters like floods, storms, earthquakes, and wildflowers. Wildfires, sorry. Humans migrate too, and for many of the same reasons. We migrate to find work, to find food and shelter, to escape war and natural disaster, to be closer to the people we love, and to live in safety and freedom. I hope that my wolf story will resonate with readers who have been uprooted from a familiar place and are trying to find their way to a new home. I am grateful to all the people who extended a warm welcome to me when I lived far from home, and I am even more grateful to people from all over the world who have moved to my home state and made it a richer and more interesting place. Okay. So, guys, that is the end of the book. It was an awesome book. I loved it. A Wolf Called Wonder. And his real name is, what again? It was Journey. Journey. So, it's a pretty, pretty cool book. Um, okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time.